From the Music One website, you'll be downloading the installer file. This one is named se-setup70.exe. Because Music One is not a typical home consumer type of application, there's a possibility that your antivirus or firewall might give you a warning when you download or begin the installation. Never fear, our software is as safe as can be, so do continue on with your installation. As is always the case with Windows, it's best to close all other applications before running a new installer. When the customer information window appears, you can enter a name and organization if you choose, but it's not required. It's going to install to a folder named Music One SE on the C drive. You can change it and have it install to a different folder or a different drive if you choose, but we do recommend using the default folder here. The setup options are typical and minimal. The only difference is the typical installation will include an empty library file, so if you are installing for the first time, this is the one you want. If you are already a Music One user and you are just installing to a different computer or a new drive, choose the minimal installation. Then, after it's complete, move your own Music One library database and your logs folder into the newly created Music One SE folder. Now that our installation is complete, let's take a look inside the folder. This is the library file. You'll be importing your song data into Music One and it will be stored in this file. You can rename the file if you want, and we do recommend that you do. Put your own station name on it. You can name it anything you choose, so long as you keep our extension, which is .m1. This is the Music One application. If you want, you can double-click and start from here. And of course, you'll have a Music One SE logo on your desktop. Double-click and start it from there. Before you go any further, see the video tutorials about checking and editing your audio files, and then importing your library data into Music One SE.